discuss trends, trends and innovations in agriculture. I would like to welcome all the participants from different countries for taking the time to attend this webinar and probably also to enrich this session by their questions and comments. Then I would like to thank warmly our guest speaker, Dr. Brigitte Slats from Sangenta Company for accepting our invitation to share her deep experience with us. I will have the pleasure to introduce Dr. Slats myself. Uh, Dr. Slats is a is seed care uh, technical expert in Europe, Africa, and Middle East at Sangenta Company. She holds a PhD degree in agricultural sciences from the University of Bonn in Germany. She started working for Syngenta Seed Care as a postdoc, launching a new nematicide research program in 2007. Shortly after, she became team leader, not only for seed care nematicides, but also for insecticides research. Uh, after spending more than a decade in biology research, in research in biology, she joined the crop product protection marketing team as the seed care technical expert for the region of Europe, Africa, and Middle East since 2018. In summary, she has more than 16 years of experience in seed treatment research. She has also more than 10 years of experience in discovery research biology at Syngenta Crop Protection Section with successes to record in the delivery of next generation seed applied chemical control agents. And also she has more than 10 years of collaboration with various private companies to evaluate new chemicals and biologicals for their use as seed applied insecticides and nematicides. And today she's going to talk about seed treatments, benefits, global market ev evolution and trends. So before giving the floor to Dr. Slats, I would like to mention also that this webinar came uh, after the approval of an ambitious partnership agreement for cereals and leg legumes sectors in seed treatments between INRA and Syngenta. So uh, also I would like to mention uh, some technical aspects. I would like to recall that the conference will take up to 40 minutes and then we will have the discussion that will take up to 50 minutes. For the discussion, please post your written questions via the chat on Zoom. Please fill in your name and affiliation before the question and do not wait until the end of the talk of the conference to ask them. You can post your questions in English or French as well. Uh, we look forward to listening to you, Dr. Slats, and to knowing more about this exciting topic. The floor is yours, Dr. Slats. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome. And it's a pleasure for me to be here today. And, and I'd like to thank the audience also for their interest in seed treatments. Because as you heard for me, uh, the area of seed treatments has has always been a, a love of mine. I've, I've never deviated from this. So even within Syngenta, I've always stayed in the area of sea treatment because I think it's a, a great area to do research in. And I think sea treatments are really very beneficial for healthy crops. So let me quickly um, give you presentation motives. One moment. Super on C presenter. Can, uh, is everything okay? Can everyone see my screen? Oh, sorry. Yes. So the title of my talk, uh, perfect. Today is Sea Treatments Benefits the Global Market Evolution and Trends. And uh, before I really kick off sea treatments, I'd like to say at Syngenta, we are committed to innovation to deliver safe and uh, sustainable solutions for growers to improve overall soil health and plant health and to help mitigate the impact of biotic and abiotic stresses. If, this, if I move to the next screen. Here we go. At Syngenta, we have a good growth plan that we abide to. So 
our aim is, is to help not only smallholder farmers, but large holder farmers improve their overall soil and plant health quality to be able to deliver long-term high, high yielding, let's say plants and yields. And so for this, we have made a commitment and in this commitment that we've made to growers to be able to, to provide them, let's say continuously with new innovations that will help ma make uh, agriculture more safe and more efficient, seed treatment is a key component in this. So what we commit to is, is the production of high quality seeds with high yields, with certain level of resistances to, to key diseases and pests, and with a seed treatment on this, on this seed with a high genetic potential, we can make sure that this seed turns into a very robust seedling, no matter what the disease or pest pressure is in the soil. So seed treatment and our commitment to uh, this good growth plan really go hand in hand. One is providing you know, certified healthy seeds to growers, whether these are small holder or large holder, farmers, because at Syngenta, we believe that every seed counts and that every seed you plant in soil should germinate and lead to a plant with a very good yield to at least maximize the gen genetic potential of this seedling. And with the seed treatment, we are helping that seedling from the get-go to deliver this genetic potential. Another one of our ambitions is to rescue more farmlands. You know, soil deterioration is a great concern. And there are a lot of crop production practices that are going more towards minimum tillage, soil conservation, in order to increase the water holding capacity of soils, in order to maintain the soil structure, to increase the organic matter content. Growers are moving more and more, especially in Europe, for instance, or in the US, to, to low or what we would call minimum tillage. And one side effect this has is that there is an increase of soil-borne diseases and pests. And again, this is where seed treatment really comes into play because with a small amount of active ingredient on the seed, you're really protecting that root in the rhizosphere from any pests or pathogens. So really promoting a type of conservation agriculture and making sure the grower has the right tool to actually protect their young plants from any kind of biotic stress. Then we'd like to help bio, biodiversity flourish. So it's a very targeted application seed treatment. In seed care, you're only protecting the rhizosphere of the root. You're not, if you like, contaminating your entire acre or hectare with, with a, a chemical pesticide, if you like. It's a very small amount of active ingredient that's placed on the seed. And so in between the rows where you have your worms and your beneficial organisms, they're thriving and continuing to thrive and you're making sure that protection, the chemical protection, for instance, is only where it needs to be and not contaminating the rest of the soil. So there again, we're really helping to reduce the overall, of, overall overhead applications, spray applications. And then in seed care, we have a, uh, a service. We're committed to provide, providing application services to the customers. So we work on recipe developments to make sure that the, that the formulations that are applied to the seed, seed coat are applied properly, that there is no dust off or rub off, that the recipe we provide is so optimal based on the machinery you have, that the exposure of the, the chemicals that are applied to the seed are as minimal as possible to the farmer, to anyone who comes into contact with this treated seed. So it's really about an optimal coating. And then we really look after what we consider every worker. We're very, very committed to making sure that our products are dealt with in a safe way. And we have stewardship trainings that we apply to, to growers, to seed companies, to make sure that they know how to deal with our, our products properly. So really, I think our Zenta Good Growth Plan is absolutely embedded in seed treatment and that together, we really have a, a great solution for growers. And again, before I move into um, uh, seed treatments, I want to state that, that soil is really the foundation of life. Soil enables vegetation, and only healthy and, and fertile soil can actually capture carbon. 
we know that globally speaking, agriculture is one of the most contaminants of, of emissions or carbon emissions. And so if we progress in improving soil health, healthy soils can capture carbon. And this can overall help reduce our overall emissions. And then this longer term also has a positive effect on climate change. So when we look at the hierarchy for achieving healthy soils, First and foremost, it's very important to retain the soil in your field. It's, for me, the precondition for everything else. And in order to do this, you know, soil, soil carbon is a, a very important building block of soil structure. So you need to have a, a, a very good soil structure. And if you have a good soil structure, this is also an indication that you have a good microbial activity. You have a, an abundancy of microflora. And, and with this, we're also saying it's, it's very important to maintain a good soil structure because this drives the soil functions through soil organisms. So overall, our key goal is to really maintain a high level of soil health. And this you know, can be done through different practices. So everything a grower does actually does impact soil health. You know, the weather is unpredictable. You have a certain crop rotation, whether these are more tight or longer, let's say uh, longer or wider crop rotations, this will have an impact on your soil health. So whether you're going after monoculture or really saying, how can I improve soil health? Which crops do I need to include in my crop rotation to ensure that it's not depleted, but, but strong and healthy? The drilling date is something a grower always also has to take into consideration. You know, when's the optimal time for drilling? The cultivation techniques, I mentioned it before with minimum or conservation tillage to minimize the impact on the soil structure. What, what are the chemicals this grower will apply and in what form will he apply it? And of course, also fertilizer use. And all of these individual components all play, have an impact on soil health. And I always say it's a very complex underground world. So while we have many beneficial organisms and worms that are really helping to improve your, your soil health, there are also threats to this, this underground world, if you like. And uh, threats to these are, are soil-borne pathogens like Rhizoctonia, Pythium, and Fusalium. These are diseases that can affect a, a multitude of crops around the globe. So this is it's not just something, let's say, for, for Northern Africa. This is an issue that all regions across the globe face in a range of different crops. Then we have underground insect pests, or, or generally pests like wireworms, white grubs, corn rootworm, flea beetles, shoot flies, that are all attacking the root system underground. And so, and the same goes for plant parasitic nematodes. The thing about these plant parasitic nematodes is they're even invisible. You don't even see them when you, when you dig your hand into soil. You can, you can find the wireworms or so, but the nematodes, they're invisible for your eye. And then when your plant gets attacked in the root system above ground, you would associate... You can associate... Um, the, the impact of nematodes to, let's say, lack of fertilization, et cetera. So at Syngenta, we say, if you want to control these early season pests and pathogens, the only time you can control these is at planting or pre-planting. Either in the past, you would take your entire field and you could fumigate it and you could kill everything in your soil, even the beneficial organisms. But then when you went to planting, you had absolutely no problems with diseases and pests. Of course, fumigation is extremely uh, hazardous, not only to the environment and, hum and humans, but also to soil health. So at Syngenta, we believe seed treatments is the ideal carrier or mechanism to apply a very small amount of active ingredient and to be able to use the seed as a carrier to apply everything to the seed coat that this seedling requires in order to develop a fruitfully. These can be something like inoculants to help with the nitrogen fixation. These can be fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, biostimulants, 
and everything is exactly where it needs to be in order to ward off the pest, the abiotic, I would say, stress factors as well as the biotic stress factors. So it's, it's a great, I would say, vehicle to take in all combined uses in order to deliver an absolutely robust seedling. And just to mention, you know, in cereals, it's key that a seed treatment fungicide is applied. It's an absolute key feature in sustainable far, uh, farming. You know, seed treatment fungicides, and in the middle, you'll see a list of the different fungicides we have in our portfolio. These effectively control seed and soil borne diseases like absolutely no other application method out there. So it's, it really leads to reliable establishment of the young seedlings. You have a lot of flexibility in your drilling time points because certain pathogens establish more rapidly depending on the soil temperatures and conditions. But if you have a strong fungicide package on your seed coats, you can withstand all the different types of pathogens that can come, come their way. And it can, these, these fungicides can be used across cultivation systems. So what we're really aiming for is to make sure that seedling develops a very strong root system, the root system that its genetic potential is actually allowing it to. And with a good root system, it will be able to access water that's located deeper in the soil. It will be able to uptake nutrients in a better way. It will become overall more resilient uh, against the fluctuating weather conditions and it will protect the genetic yield potential. So for us, as a seed treatment fungicide is absolutely the base every seed should actually contain just to make sure that you have flexibility, that you can, you can drill whenever you know it's optimal for you, that you can ensure a homogeneous and, and speedy crop establishment. It's really laying the foundation for your follow-up applications, if you like. And I mentioned before, we, we couple fungicides with insecticides, inoculants, nematicides. We have a, a rich portfolio of products that you can mix and match, almost like people mix and match clothing, depending on what you need. And so thiamethoxum, for instance, is one of, uh, is one of the first most effective seed applied insecticides ever invented actually in history, to be honest. And if we look back, the, the seed applied neonicotinoids to which thiamethoxum also belongs, really replaced in furrow applied carbamates and organophosphates because these were applied in furrow and, and they were applying kilograms per hectare. And with the neonicotinoids for the first time you could apply a molecule to the seed without having to apply it in furrow and get the same level of control of soil pests and above ground sucking, sucking pests as with your inferro applied organophosphates and carbonates. So but this was revolutionary for the grower. You know, it went from, from a very, I'd say, hassle-ridden um, application method to a very simple and convenient method. You know, you would get an in-the-bag solution with seeds treated with your fungicide and then came an insecticide. And then you were not only warding off seed and soil borne diseases, you were warding off every early season above ground sucking and chewing pests and, and below ground soil dwelling pests. And in addition, it also has excellent control potential of storage pests. So it's a, a broad spectrum insecticides, insecticide with absolutely unique features. It has a, a very high level of water solubility which allows optimal uptake into the roots and into the upper plant part, allowing for a very effective control of the pests that attack it, whether they feed on the roots or the upper plant part, there is an instant action that comes to an immediate death. So you'll see the seedling is very well protected against, as you can see, a range of pests, not only when you apply it to the soil as a seed treatment, but also in storage, for instance. And if I, I move along, this is just to give you an impression of the different seed treatment products that we offer in our global portfolio. And we're constantly working on enriching this portfolio with new solutions. And we're also really busy building an abiotic stress portfolio with, with a range of biostimulants to cope better with, with drought stress conditions, heat stress, 
And this is very key for us that innovation is maintained in this area and that this portfolio is really all, always delivering new technologies, improved technologies, and that the growers have a type of portfolio they can choose from depending on the history of issues they have in their field sites. And as I, I mentioned below, we, we don't only serve our customers with, I would say, best-in-class portfolio of products and uh, pre mix solutions. So what we also do is, if we know, okay, there's like a Fortenza Duo, this is the combination of thiamethoxam, for instance, and cyanotronelli pole. With these two combined, there is absolutely not a single pest that you can't control early season. So what we do is we create these type of pre-mix or ready-mix offers that makes it even more convenient for, for seed companies or farmers to handle. Another component is, let's see one second here, is, is the application technique. So if you, if you provide growers with products and we have a, a certain type of application method and that's to the seed, we have an, an absolutely unique support system set up with the help of our Seed Care Institute to support the growers and the seed companies to safely and effectively apply our products to the seeds. And for this, for every new product we introduce into the market, there is a recipe development that's undertaken and a range of seed safety studies on multiple genetics and quality of seeds carried out to make sure that none of these products have any type of negative effect whatsoever on seed safety, or what we say is seedling emergence. And I worked in research very long and every molecule that has any kind of delay of emergence is, is immediately discarded. Chemistry really needs to be optimized, not only for efficacy, but also for seed safety. We don't want anything impacting the seed code. And that's why it's, so, it's, it's quite unique that Syngenta has its own seed care research facility, if you like. We have a, a crop protection research uh, colleagues that look for foliar solutions. And in seed care, we're looking to target every early season pathogen and pest through seed tree use, which means these chemistries are optimized only for seed treatment use. And this also is always a given that we get seed safety. And so on top of making sure that we have safe compounds, safe products that we're applying to the seeds and that we have the optimal recipe, we also support in the application. So we have a team going to different sites, looking at the machinery growers or seed companies have and to say, okay, with your equipment, we can modify the recipe to make sure that you have an excellent coating quality. And then also stewardship and training to make sure that uh, the protective gear while applying seed treatments is always a given and that the worker is never exposed to any type of chemical seed treatment. So the services part, I mentioned before that we have that service that, that we're mobile, that we also invite our customers to come to our Seed Care Institute for educational training. So we're extremely customer centric and we, we want to meet the demand for your treated seeds. So we definitely offer this technical and agronomic uh, support. And we're really flexible and reliable in the supply planning and uh, procurement and also in um, equipment finance facilities. So if, if equipment is needed, we can come up with financial plans to help support. But overall, we're a very strong team with an excellent global network of seed care institutes uh, where we have a lot of throughput. And just to maybe I'll show you what generally a seed treatment looks like, it's based on a, a formulation, as you saw our, our product portfolio. And then this formulation in a type of slurry to which colorants, polymers, water finishing powders can be added, as well as inoculants. These then create a type of slurry that are applied to the seed coat in a proper recipe that's developed also by our Seed Care Institute colleagues. And so what they take into consideration is the type of treater that's being used, the type of formulations that will go into mixture together, and then they can advise at what types of polymers, finishing powders, et cetera, can be added. So this is the type of special recipe development that our colleagues carry out. 
And I think going through this, but the, the key benefits of a seed treatment really are these agronomic benefits. You are maximizing the seedling establishment in this early plant growth, protecting it from all biotic and abiotic stresses. It's extremely cost effective compared to broad acre pesticide applications. You also have a reduced number of applications or, or times where you need to go over the same field with a tractor, so less compression of the fields, better for your soil structure. You have that reduced environmental impact that I'll go into in a second. It's very user friendly because the seeds can come, the seeds, it's, it's minimum amount of containers. We have very low volumes of products that are applied to seed. And you're not dependent on favorable weather conditions like unlike the foliar spray applications. So we can really apply a mixture of different products to control every single early season pest and disease that a grower can face. And then just to illustrate how much less active ingredients is applied through seed treatment use versus in furrow or even a, a spray application, I think this quite nicely shows it. And, and the example here is a corn insecticide, whereas a seed, as through seed treatment, you're only applying it to 58 square meters of your field. If you apply in furrow treatment with granules, 500 square meters of your field are, if you like, contaminated. And if you were to spray the whole field, you have 10,000 square meters, let's say, contaminated with the product. So with seed treatments, it's very local, and the rest of your, of your field is actually untouched. So it's really targeted. And then luckily, I mean, it's good to work for an R&D company because you face challenges. You know, there are a lot of challenges overall generally in society. And, and one of these is a political and the regulatory pressure. I mean, I, I'm currently in Europe, Africa, Middle East. I, I feel the pressure the NGOs have on, on European growers. It's, it's pushing more towards organic agriculture under the Green Deal. I think or organic agriculture should rise to approximately 25%. They, they want to replace chemicals entirely, which is, which is definitely a challenge because we're at optimized chemistries currently with actually very good tox profiles given these newer types of chemistries that have overcome all these regulatory hurdles to be implemented in the market. So they already have a, a very, I would say, favorable environmental uh, profile. But nonetheless, they're still under pressure to, to delivering a more green biological solution. So this is something at Syngenta that we're also heavily investing in is not only delivering a, a chemical portfolio, it's always easiest with chemicals because you can optimize molecules to become more potent against a certain target pest. And you can optimize chemicals to become very safe to seeds just by modifying the structure. I mean, with today's tools, and I have to say, uh, there's a lot of evolution and innovation ongoing in, in, let's say, optimizing chemistries. You can, in the past, when the organophosphates or carbon mates were in the market, no one cared about beneficial safety. It was about killing the target pest. And okay, if you had a bit of aquatic fish toxicity or bee safety issues, it didn't matter as long as your pests were killed. But Nowadays, the chemicals are, are optimized in such a way that beneficial organisms are not affected and that or at least to the least extent possible, and that your target organism is the one that you're after. Maybe the insecticides in the future will be not as, let's say, broad spectrum, but they're becoming more selective and more safe and more targeted so that you don't have any type of, or we're trying to minimize the, the side effects against beneficial organisms. And I can say with the help of computational chemistry, this is uh, really sh shaping nicely. But nonetheless, uh, we do want to incorporate biologicals also into our offer. The, the downside of biologicals are that once you find an isolate with a certain, let's say a bacteria or so with a certain level of performance against a fungal pathogen, you can say, okay, it delivers 50% activity, but theoretically with the chemical, you're striving for 95, 100% control. And with biologicals, you get what you get with your living organism, for instance. It's 40% it's say efficacy, 
And you can't modify the organism. In chemistry, you could say, well, we need to modify the structure so that we can knock out this, this pest or this pathogen, you know, with the right mode of action and dock it in there and it's killed. With a biological organism, you cannot modify the structure to or, or the organism. And, and so the, the biologicals will never be as strong as a, a chemical solution, but they can be a good uh, mixture concept with chemical solutions where we may be able to go down with the rate. But nonetheless, you know, we're, we're trying to, to, let's say, supply in both of these segments and actually come up with types of uh, mixture concepts for biologicals and chemicals as well. So yes, um, I think in, in Europe, we're, we're definitely under pressure to, to delivering a, a greener biologicals a portfolio. The regulatory and, uh, hurdles are becoming more and more difficult. I mean, just off the bat, I can say to, to develop a single molecule, it costs around 260 million US dollars. And the duration of time, if you start from scratch to delivery into the first market is between 10 and 15 years, if you start from scratch. If it's a chemistry that's already existing, if this could take eight years. But the costs are continuously increasing because the demand of regulatory to deliver more and more tox toxicity results is increasing. And so the cost for the introduction of new chemical pesticides, if you like, is increasing heavily as well. And so there is this uh, technology evolution for sure. So there's a complexity of products, you know, the combination of these biologicals and chemicals, the combination of, of more molecules, because the individual molecules may have a bit more narrow spectrum of performance or the, uh, a very important component is pest resistance building. So in order to avoid a rapid resistance buildup against the chemistry, very often what we like to promote is the use of two different chemistries with two different mode of actions in order to couple these and prevent that one of these suffers resistance buildup. So together they're typically stronger against pests like as Spodoptera, for instance, fall armyworm, or any other Asian soybean rust in Brazil. These are types of uh, pests or pathogens that can develop resistance to chemicals quickly. And so it's always good to either come with multiple mode of actions, one through seed treatment and different foliar applications later on in the season, or, or for instance, now against downy mildew and sunflower, where um, this downy mildew is building up resistance against chemicals quickly. For the future, we only recommend the combination of two to make sure that this resistance buildup is delayed. And so we are, we are offering, I would say, uh, very innovative new offers, but there are tough economic conditions. So we have low commodity prices, currency volatility, trade barriers, so on the one hand, the NGOs and regulatory, they like newer and safer solutions. We like newer and safer solutions too, of course, at Syngenta. But you know, innovation also, especially in the beginning, comes with a cost. And um, innov innovative new product concepts, they are sometimes a bit pricey. And, and, and that's why low commodity prices do not help the growers to be able to afford an access let's say these new innovations. So it's, it's a, a bit of a, you know, a vicious circle. On the one hand, you're under a lot of pressure to deliver these innovations. On the other hand, growers could use almost more financial support to be able to access such, such innovations as well. Okay, I'd, I'd like to give you um, a little indication of the overall global seed treatment market size. This data is unfortunately from 2018, but overall the, the estimated market in 2018 was at 3.1 billion. 2.8 billion was based on fungicide, insecticide, and nematicide seed treatment applications. And then you see ASM or a CE, which stands for abiotic stress management or crop enhancement. And what we understand under abiotic stress management or crop enhancement are, are micronutrients, microbials, microbial and oculants, et cetera, that can be applied to the seed that helps the plant cope 
with abiotic stress early season and allow for a speedy homogeneous emergence of the seedling under abiotic stress. And this is a market segment that was at uh, 300 million in uh, 2018. And this is a market segment we're also heavily investing in. So we believe, you know, with your, with your classical chemical fungicide, insecticide, and nematicide, you're really controlling that biotic stress factor. And with our ASM crop enhancement products, we're really focusing again on the, the plant health component. So everything is really about plant health. It's about ensuring plant nutrition. So a lot of these microbials, they help to help to make nutrients more available for the plant, or they help to fix aerial nitrogen, for instance. And so these, I'd say all these different types of tools are all benefiting plant health, whether it's helping with nutrient uptake or whether it's helping with warding off uh, biotic stresses. And if we look at the seed treatment markets uh, based on the, the location of seed treatment, we can see that globally the split on the use of seed treatments between seed breeders, on-farm applicators, uh, these are growers or multiplier retailers is very even. So you can see there's actually a very good adoption in these three segments for the use of seed treatments. If we, if we move along to, to the use of seed treatments uh, crop dependent, it's clear that uh, cereals is the biggest global seed treatment market. And uh, you can see here, it's, it's at 784 million. This is followed by soybeans, as you know, in, uh, in uh, LATAM and in, in the US. In China, soybeans is a, a very large crop. And corn specialty crops to what we, as specialty crops uh, comprise vegetables, diverse field crops comprise as sunflower, sugar beet, oilseed rape. Then we have vegetables and oh, I don't, let me see the specialty crop. I see vegetables down there as well. Specialty crops would be, now I see potatoes more. Yes, I uh, see they've pulled those two apart. So we have vegetables as the own segment and specialty crops at 340 million. But I, this nicely illustrates that globally cereals is the number one crop and also the biggest overall seed treatment market business segment. So here we're looking at, um, at a bit of a comparison on uh, the trend for the seed treatment application, just comparing uh, Morocco with France. So in France, there is a, a high adoption of treated uh, cereal seeds, we're at a, 100%. And um, so all, I would say certified seed, and this is kind of split between certified and farm safe seeds, if you like. So of the 5 million quintals of, of certified seeds, 100% is treated either with a fungicide or a fungicide insecticide. And regarding the farm safe seeds, which is also about 5 million quintals, 100% is treated. Whether it's just a fungicide or a fungicide insecticide, given you know, the region where it's sown, there's full adoption. And, and really, I think in, in Europe, it's, it's very clear that the use of a seed treatment is, is standard practice. It really secures this early season establishment, the genetic potential, and really contributes to, to this yield increase. In um, Morocco, you can see the, the split is a bit different. We have certified seeds, it's 20% and farm safe seeds at 80%. So for the certified seeds, I think 100% is treated with a, a standard based fungicide. I believe it's uh, set more or less by the government, how much can, or the seed cost is set by the government, as I've understood correctly, and this includes a single base fungicide. Looking at farm safe seeds, where we have 6 million quintals, only 0.1% are treated with a fungicide or an insecticide potentially. And, and this is quite low if you compare this to, to the French growers that, that grow their own farm safe seeds, where the adoption of seed treatments is much higher. And so this, this is definitely a differ, differentiation between um, Morocco and, and France. So overall, we can say in, in Morocco, 
what we saw with uh, France being 50% uh, certified seeds. We have a very low percentage of certified seeds in um, Morocco, a much higher percentage of farm safe seeds. And so there already, I think uh, there's a bit of a differentiation. So when we look at soft wheat, 34% of these are certified seeds. For durum wheat, it's 18%. And for barley, it's, it's really 2%. And it's, it's quite a, uh, an amount of hectare you have that you're growing these crops. Now, one thing, you know, where I'd say in, in France, they have a, a high level of certified seeds because for certified seeds, you know that your germination quality is excellent. You know, you're, you're paying for a high quality seeds. It's, it's a, and, and that's why this, this strategy where every seed counts, if you have high genetic potential, you have a high level of uh, emergence. You want to make sure that every seed you pay for germinates in your soil that could have different issues. If you have farm safe seeds, depending on, uh, on which year this is in, you know that the level of quality of seeds tends then to decline and the overall emergence rate is lower. So I think in, in Europe, purchasing certified seeds is, is done quite frequently just to maintain the high level of a seed emergence and then getting a high, higher yield also for this. Okay, so why, why could there be a, a low penetration of these seed treatment technologies? You know, I think little knowledge is, is there among farmers. You know, I think little knowledge is generally there among which pathogens and pests are present in your soil because they're underground. It makes it very difficult to really feel which pathogens and, and pests are present. And so the farmer awareness is very low because you can't see these diseases. So the, the farmer doesn't exactly know what's influencing his overall plant emergence. Is it a, a poor seed lot? Is it a damping off disease like Fusarium pythium or Rhizoctonia? It's, it's just, I would just say more of an ignorance factor. So very little knowledge is, is there amongst the farmers. And then also not understanding what solutions are available in the market that could be applied to improve the overall plant establishment. And so there's not much communication about the treatments, also the base treatment of a, of a fungicide, what offer, different offers there are and how this offer could be improved. I think uh, also in Morocco, the, the certified seeds come with a standard fungicide seed treatment where the growers are not aware of what other treatments are there out there that could actually give an even better improvement to what I'm already getting. So it's a type of state subsidy mechanism. It's kind of a side effect of the seed subsidy system, which drives down the cost and does not encourage seed companies to invest in quality seed treatments. So there's a, a set price. And a seed company won't apply multiple seed treatments because in the end, the seed company will have to cover the cost for this. And since he can't valorize the addition of, let's say, a very good additional component, there is no point for the seed company to start adding different technologies to the seed code to improve the overall potential of the, of the seedlings because um, it, it's just a losing cost on his end. And so there's a very limited interest from seed companies to explore what opportunities there are out there to improve the genetic performance of their seed lots in the field just because of these type of set prices. And so currently there's a low involvement of, of companies in seed processing that don't really encourage agrochemical companies to develop a wide range of seed treatments in this segment because uh, it's, it's set, so strictly set. And, I think this is something at Syngenta we'd like to explore to see, can we can, you know, illustrate the value add by applying a more sophisticated product concept? So currently, just to use this as an example, you know, there are six mega Moroccan dirham invested in a very basic triazole fungicide treatment, which is absolutely the minimum that, that they're actually applying. And then if you look at the spend on the seeds, which is uh, over 700, or fertilizer, which is at 1,600, herbicides or foliar fungicides, 
the amount spent on a seed treatment to, to enable that early season of plant establishment of a healthy seedling is absolutely minimal. And, and this could definitely be improved. And, and we can say definitely by using a seed treatment, you know, understanding the history of your field site and, and, and getting the right composition of a seed treatment, you can really achieve an excellent return on investment. So here we're even saying one to 20. It's just the, the ignorance or not being aware of, of this value add that an excellent seed treatment can have on your final yield is it's unfortunately not understood. Yeah. So really for us, it's about um, preserving the seed genetic potential through an optimal seed treatment package, securing the crop in these early stages, to have the efficient and effective use of inputs, and then to really contribute to overall yield increase and food security. So it really can, can lay the foundation for absolutely excellent yields. If I think in an approach from end to end, all the right steps are taken by the grower. And to, to really miss out on that early seedling establishment and to ward off these damping off diseases, it, it's, a, it's a critical component that shouldn't be missed out on. And I think if, if at some point you're saving on the wrong end, you could be saving on the wrong end by saving on your seed tree. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, Congenta Seed Care. We're definitely a world leader in, in R&D and, and globally, I think we have a very strong footprint and we're a world leader, leader who also in, invests in Morocco. So, you know, we have um, two fungicides, Spectra Extreme and Celeste Extra as fungicides that we, that we have registered for use in, in uh, cereals. We have fungicide insecticides like Celeste Hoff and Apron Star, which is absolutely unique in the creams. And we have a pipeline of other products coming into these two segments as well in cereals and legumes. And uh, for, for nematicides and ASM, these are two, two areas that are also in progress. But I can say at Syngenta, even though it's, it's a tough segment because typically only a base, a base fungicide is, is applied and, and let's say funded by the seed company, we do see, see the benefit of applying, let's say, a type of second offer that may be a bit more costly, but in the end, the grower will see that the return on investment. And it's really about education. And this is where, as a company, where we place a lot of emphasis. So education is key for us. And, and maybe just to share, we have a global network of sea care institutes where we invite customers to come. And what we'd like to state is that in, in Morocco in 2022, we will have a lab opening up there in order to invite customers to, to our facility there and to do trainings to understand also maybe to help understand what kind of soil pathogens are present in your soil, how to improve seed treatment quality, for instance, how to educate the growers to, to select the right products for the right areas and the right crops. And I think uh, we're really set up globally and in, in the region and in the country to really serve our customers. So with this, I would like to actually share, share a video with you on, on the, the importance of the quality of sea treatments and the benefits you have. So I hope you can all hear the sound in a second. Healthy, vigorous crops, an abundant harvest, the promise of a secure return on your investment. But behind this perfect picture, many diseases threaten your crops. The good news? Syngenta seed treatment provides strong protection against these threats. Even better, it can also accelerate growth and strengthen young plants. But only proper seed treatment gives proper protection. As a leader in innovative seed treatment products, we at Syngenta have the know-how and state-of-the-art laboratories to test the treatment quality of the seeds you buy from your seed supplier. Our tests focus on six key parameters that determine treatment quality and ultimately your crop yields. The first test is accurate active ingredient loading. 
The correct product dose is crucial to provide the required protection for the disease species and infestation levels. Our analysis techniques ensure that the seed is treated with a proper dose, not too low, nor too high. Next, the surface of each seed must be uniformly coated, consistently from first seed to last. Every seed surface must have a correct, uniform to give good protection against diseases. This is measured optically with the Quest Pro Analyzer. The compositions of Syngenta seed treatment products facilitate these measurements. The seed treatment product may stay on the seed. Rub-off must be as minimal as possible. And dust should be reduced as much as possible for health and environmental reasons. This is achieved through a good recipe design and correct application processes. Dust formation is metered using the accredited Urbach test. To ensure easy bagging and transfer to the planting equipment, the seed must flow smoothly. Finally, when the treated seed is planted, uniform coating, no rub-off and minimal dust enable a smooth and easy seed flow into drilling machines. Here, consistent treatment quality can simplify the calibration of your equipment. Only proper seed treatment gives a good start to plant growth and safeguards your yield potential. Syngenta is your partner, helping your crop get off to a strong, vigorous start to improve yield and quality and secure your effort and investment in high-value seeds. Let's preserve this perfect picture together. So, and with this, I, I'd like to thank you all for your attention today, and I'm, I'm happy to take any questions you may have. I see in the chat there are 11 comments. With this, I can also stop sharing. Thank you, Dr. Slavs, for this rich presentation, rich talk, which showed the, the importance and the added value of the seed treatment for increasing the farmer's incomes and also the productivity of this uh, of uh, our agriculture. And what, yes, it showed also and highlighted also some uh, aspects of sustainability by uh, limiting some further treatments during the cycle of the plants and so on. Okay, mm -hmm. I will... Uh, I will look uh, for uh, at the questions asked by my colleagues. Oh, first, there is a comment from Dr. Farahi, my colleague. Mm -hmm. uh, he is asking for updating the data presented for Morocco. Soft wheat area is more than 2 million hectares, not 1.5 million hectares. Besides, the use of certi certified seed is more than 20%. It's actually more than 24% right now. And oh, in excellent. the Generation Green strategy, we are aiming to rise the tap at least 40% by 2030. Okay, I will- <laughs> That's excellent news. I'm happy to hear this. So okay. good to take back. Uh, his first question, he's uh, uh, Dr. Farahi, there are some chemical molecules used in seed treatments that have negative impact on early crop establishment. They mainly reduce the plant vigor and impact later on some yield component, vigor, number of plant by surface uh, and unit, tilling, and so on. How do you deal with this aspect at Syngenta Seed Camp? I, I do have to say that um, the seed treatments that we applied to the seeds shouldn't have a negative impact, especially not on yield. What we do always recommend is if, if you apply seed treatments, you need to apply high quality seed lots. So if you start to have seed lots that are of lesser quality, definitely certain seed treatments in, uh, may have an impact on, on the emergence. But typically, we don't have seed treatment products in our portfolio with, with let's say, adverse effects on, on crop safety. But you can, you can see, let's say, a negative effect of, and I, I wouldn't even, well, because these are thoroughly tested and we do a lot of seed safety and crop safety studies when we, when we register new products. And if, um, if a product leads to negative crop safety, 
these products are typically not registered. But what we have seen is if, if poor seed lots are used for seed treatment and seed treatments are applied to poor seed lots, then definitely they can actually lead to it. It's even more stress. So this seed lot that has lesser quality gets a seed treatment. It's already struggling a bit with its emergence because the quality is not very high. And if you then start to apply things to the seed, and this can be everything, this can be biostimulants, chemical seed treatments, they will all affect, they can have an effect. I'm not saying always, but they can have an effect on the overall establishment. That's why when we recommend the use of seed treatments, it typically we recommend the use of high quality seed because there you shouldn't see any impact. So I don't know if, if you've seen this phenomenon on seeds that are treated with Syngenta products that are of high quality seed lots and you're using seed care products from Syngenta. And I know there are certain chemistry classes that can have a bit of a negative impact, but typically really if, if the seed lot is, is, is not the greatest, or sometimes you'll see maybe a delay of emergence, but never a negative. Uh, I, we cannot hear you anymore. I'm sorry for that. Okay. I don't know why. Okay, no, it's okay. But, but typically maybe you'll see a slight delay in emergence, but to have a, a negative effect on tillering or yield, this is something then, to be honest, we have um, a team dedicated to seed safety. So if a customer comes and says, well, you know, we applied your products and we're seeing such a negative effect in the plant on crop safety, we immediately tackle these issues. So the seed lots are sent in, we do an AI analysis to make sure that it wasn't overloaded with product. That's why for us, the service part is so important because we want high quality seed treatments. So if the seeds remain too wet, they don't dry back properly. Uh, maybe you're missing a type of drying powder. You know, our Seed Care Institute will help tackle how you can improve the seed treatment to avoid any kind of negative effect. That's why recipe development is key. High seed qual lot, lot quality is key to, to really work with your, if you, if, if this is a Syngenta Sea Care product, we will definitely help at making sure this doesn't happen again. And we will troubleshoot where exactly this is coming from because uh, a sea treatment that has a negative impact on yield is something we definitely don't promote. Mm -hmm. But this is something you can actually analyze to say, is the AI loading, was it correct? Was the application method correct or was it too wet for too long, for instance? You know, there are a lot of features. It's, it's, it's not straight, it's not just, you need a little bit of skills and, and the interaction with the Syngenta, I would say, rep to make sure that it's done perfectly. Yeah, and, and we also have um, products in our portfolio that are actually enhancing uh, the emergence, such as Sedaxane or our new fungicide or thiamethoxam is giving a very good vigor effect. So we really don't promote products that typically have a negative effect. But if you do see these, and these are some Gentile products, then please immediately contact a rep because we will definitely figure out what's leading to this. Um, okay. His next question from Dr. Rahi also. Is there any optimal time between seed treatments and date of plant planting? Some chemicals tend to have negative impact if the time between treatment and planting is longer. No, actually not, because um, we do a lot of uh, shelf life studies for treated seeds. So when we treat seeds, we also re-sow them a year later after they've been in storage. And we expect the molecules to perform at the same level, let's say, after storage than they would two or three weeks after treatment. So there is no optimal time. The, the nice thing about seed treatment is that growers have the flexibility to drill the seed when they want to. So I, I cannot say you need to sow these seeds now within three or four weeks because otherwise uh, you lose efficacy. That's, that's not the case if it's done properly. No. Okay. His next question also sustainable. Actually, it was answered by a colleague from Sangenta from Yunus Buryamin, but I will cite the question. Sustainable pro production is a key, a key element right now, including environment protection by reducing the use of pesticides. 
I, uh, he, see, he sees that Syngenta is still recommending the use of chemicals while some environment protection or agencies are struggling to reduce them. How do you balance between the environment protection and the safety regulation that is being pushed out in different countries to reduce the use of pesticides? What do you think about put more emphasis on genetic resistance as a friendly environment approach? I, I absolutely can say, you know, Syngenta crop protection, we also have Syngenta seeds. I work hand in hand with my Syngenta seeds colleagues. And if there is a, a trait of resistance, I always say you get season long control for sure, but even traits can, and can be broken. So both in the area of crop protection research as in trait research, it takes a certain amount of years to, to deliver new solutions into the market. So you wanna maintain your traits or maintain the efficacy of your chemistry as long as possible. And to be honest, sometimes the use of a combined offer is also a good one to, to make sure that the longevity of your, your solutions for the market is, made, is, is given. But um, definitely in, in Europe, we're under very much pressure. You know, we, they, they pull a lot of active ingredients from the markets before companies actually have a replacement. And, you know, we've just seen it now, for instance, in sugar beets, you know, where, where there's no neonicotinoids to control aphids that, that transmit a virus to sugar beet. The yield, so, so they pulled the neonics out of the market, but they didn't replace it with a, a new solution. So now the yield loss due to this virus in sugar beet is intense, it's immense. And so now there's an emergency use a derogation for the use of neonics and sugar beets because there was no alternative solution available. So these environmental agencies need to find a balance. They pull things out of the market before good replacement solutions are given. So the sea companies are looking for, uh, towards breeding for tolerance against the virus, but it's extremely tricky. If you don't have a silver bullet solution, you're still losing a lot of yield. And it's really about together coming up with a sustainable solution. And, and at Syngenta, we're also heavily investing in innovation to keep coming with new and safer chemistries with biological alternatives, with trade solutions. But these don't happen overnight. These take decades to, to deliver. So these NGOs, from my standpoint, it, I think it's great to strive for a greener and more sustainable agriculture, but it, it takes time and it takes commitment and it takes a lot of financial resources. And it's something that gets forgotten really quickly, I think. But I think we're on a good way, but there are definitely some gaps that we won't be filling immediately. But I think longer term, everything will be more sustainable and more green, and there will be a lot more combined uses of traits and let's say greener products. But it's, it's not gonna be tomorrow immediately, that's for sure. Yes. Okay, next question from Sliman Khi, Dr. Sliman Khi from INRA. Several recent uh, studies demonstrated the relevance of seed-borne mi microbiome in uh, agro-systems in general. As the seed treatments are targeting seed and soil-borne diseases, what about the non-target organisms living on the seeds? For example, on the fights, mm -hmm. uh, how your product could in, could in smart way avoid eradicating these beneficial living organisms on the seed? Yeah, that's a, a very good question. So, and that's one thing, the, the endophytes on the seed is definitely um, a, a particular case. We say because we're so localized as a seed treatment, we only play in that, in that root zone of the early seedling in the first few weeks after establishment. But then what we're aiming for also with our chemicals is that they degrade in soil and they're no longer present at the end of the season for sure. But with a fungicide or an insecticide, typically you have no adverse effect on bacteria, for instance. So if your endophyte is a, a bacteria that's it's, it's non-pathogenic to the seed, these are very often not affected by the fungicide or insecticide. So therefore you'll see also a range of different bacillus-based products coming into the market as a seed treatment because they're very compatible with chemical fungicide and insecticides. 
and may establish well in the, in the soil rhizosphere. But with a, with a, a fungal en endophyte, there could be a compatibility issue. What we do is we're also looking at yeast and at fungal antagonists for our biocontrol portfolio. And we run compatibility testing with our, our major fungicides and these, and, and you'll see that, that they're not all negative so that there is a certain level of compatibility for sure. But, but what good, one good thing about seed treatment is you don't have any, I would say you only are affecting that rhizosphere and in between the rows or so, you're not having any negative effect. But definitely in our tox profiling, there's a lot of um, testing ongoing to see what kind of impact do we have on, on soil microflora. And it's, it's becoming a topic that's of interest to everyone, even Syngenta. So the, the soil microflora and what, let's say, what microorganisms are a good indicator for soil health. This is a, a very fresh topic. And I think there are a lot more tools now to understand you know, the, the soil microflora better. The soil microbiome is a, a big topic that, that we're also involved in. You know, just understanding which microorganisms could be good indicators for good soil health and which ones for lesser soil health. And also looking towards the future. I mean, now we're at targeted seed treatment delivery. Uh, in the future, it could be only in areas of the field that really require it. So as long as diagnostic tools get better and better, the reduction of active ingredients will definitely come into play. I think uh, agriculture in 20 years from now will look completely different than today also, or 50. But, but the, the tools are getting very good. And I think precision agriculture will also enable even a, a stronger reduction of inputs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question from Abdelhamid Ramdani from INRA. Uh, he's asking, do the fungicides, insecticides, Tangenta products have uh, an impact on the Hessian fly, which is the main biotic stress in dry areas? So I haven't tested exactly against this. I don't know, Younes is also on the call, my, my colleague from Syngenta. Youssef, do you want to maybe give a comment? It does control flies, fly on the toxin, but I'm, you need to also test against the individual species. But uh, Youssef, do you, could you perhaps comment? Okay, uh, uh, okay, can I switch in French, please? <laughs> okay, so for me, it's true that all the solutions today that we propose with the treatment of fungicides and insecticides, they have an effect euh, sur la protection immédiate de la semence, donc euh, pour toute la partie euh, euh, souterraine, donc euh, dans le sol. Et après, donc, on voit par exemple le tiamétoxam que notre collègue Brigitte a, a, a montré, donc qui a un effet, bien sûr, de la protection, donc des early stage, donc c'est la phase de démarrage de la plante, donc de l'émergence. Par contre, s'il y a des attaques, très tardif pour la culture, je pense qu'il y, euh, qu y a donc d'autres solutions à faire donc en folia. Voilà. Yes, his question was about the early stage also. I think it answers his question. Yeah. The next question from my colleague uh, Krimi Sana uh, from INRA. Seed treatment can be effective against early disease infection, infection or soil-borne pathogen. But what about late infection in the season? Is there any product that can induce resistance? So it's linked to the previous. Yeah, part. interesting. So, so typically we have a certain window of protection and it's, it's really that early season control of, of seaborne diseases and damping off diseases like Fusarium pythium and Rhizoctonia. But if, if uh, certain diseases come in very late in the season, it becomes, Actually, it's very difficult to control then soil-borne diseases. Only through foliar applications can you complement uh, the seed treatment. But uh, the activity, it, it doesn't last for, for, for multiple months. We're talking a maximum like six weeks or so, four to six weeks of protection. And the diseases that come in later is something that need to be controlled then through foliar applications. 
Okay. And yeah, and, but and you mentioned the systemically induced resistance. I can't say that we in 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 France or Spain we're going to launch a product we call Recivi, which contains Atsi Bensola S methyl, and that induces the the plant's own defense mechanism. And what we get with the application of a C treatment of this this molecule is the 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 plant's own genetic defense against downy mildew. Uh, for the full, the first and also for sec against secondary attack of down in Belgium. Mm -hmm. And so this is an absolutely interesting new concept also for Syngenta to work with a new mode of activity that's not targeting uh, the mode of action in an insect pest or a pathogen, but it's targeting the plant's own genetic defense mechanisms. And there we're getting much longer control with this type of chemistry. So it's very interesting. This, this plant defense activation is a, an upcoming, I'd say, area. And I'm, I'm happy to say that we're playing in this segment with our, our new product, the CV. Yes, and, and then I think in the future, there may be new, new products that are also targeting this segment. Activating the plant's own genetic defense, not coming in through breeding, but coming in through an external chemical that's inducing this and helping to overcome, let's say, diseases that are present later in the season by just activating it in an early stage and letting this be activated throughout the growing season. So an, a very interesting um, area to play in for sure. Next question by Anas Benani. Uh, he, despite the efforts that Sengenta making, is making for a very effective cereal seed treatments, products to Morocco market. Uh, however, the cost of seed treatments remain very expensive for cereal seeds. Uh, what can Syngenta do to reduce the cost of the treatments? You said. <laughs> uh, sure, I will switch off also in French. Maybe that will be uh, easier for me uh, to respond. Effectivement, euh, Monsieur Benani, euh, aujourd'hui, les solutions proposées par Syngenta euh, répondent très bien donc à la demande de marché. Et comme il a expliqué euh, notre collègue Dr. Bejit, que le, maintenant nous sommes sur un effet secondaire donc de, de, de système, du système de la subvention actuelle. Donc, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, ce que Saint-Genta propose, c'est un retour sur investissement pour les agriculteurs qui est très important. Donc, euh, sur les, les estimations faites sur la base de plusieurs essais, donc aujourd'hui, un agriculteur peut facilement euh, euh, avoir 20 dirhams pour chaque dirham investi en traitement de semences. Donc, pour nous, c'est plus important de voir donc, ce retour sur investissement que de, que de voir aujourd'hui donc euh, le prix euh, le prix euh, de la solution est, est proposé effectivement sur le, le pipeline il y a beaucoup de produits qui répondent à chaque à chaque problème à part donc il y a des agriculteurs qui ont besoin que d'un fongicide suite donc à leur expérience et, et, et les analyses des sols pour les analyses du sol et donc et l'historique qu'ils ont par rapport à leur parcelle et d'autres ils ont besoin donc des solutions plus complètes avec des fongicides et insecticides et voir d'autres qui vont partir vers d'autres solutions plus innovantes vers tout ce qui est gestion donc des stress abiotiques donc c'est le marché qui qui bien sûr qui va suivre et saint jantas je sais qu'il fait beaucoup d'efforts pour poussé au maximum. Je salue le travail que c'est Alfani a fait, ça fait des années, pour réduire au maximum donc le, le, les, les prix pour le, le Maroc. Et, et généralement, c'est des, euh, des prix qui ne sont pas les prix de l'Europe, c'est des prix de l'Afrique. Et voilà, merci. Euh, Youssef, euh, si tu permets, je peux ajouter par rapport à cette oui. question Bien sûr, euh, à travers la, cette euh, partenariat Syngenta Inra, si l'objectif c'est si oui. Vous pouvez vous présenter, s'il vous plaît. Oui, je euh, euh, Younes, oui, oui, je suis, je suis ah, oui, oui. Euh, Merci, euh, Docteur Badr. Moi, je suis Younes Poyem. Je suis euh, responsable technique euh, des herbicides, fongicides et des traitements de semences pour euh, l'Afrique et le, le Middle East. Donc, euh, basé à Rabat. 
Et, euh, merci. Je, je commence par remercier euh, Dr. Badr et euh, à, à our colleague uh, Brigitte for your presentation. So, um, uh, je reste en français, bien sûr, pour euh, rapidement cette question, parce que ce n'est pas le prix qui nous intéresse, c'est juste pour aborder à la réponse de, de Youssef. La problématique majeure euh, au Maroc, c'est la non-utilisation de, de ce monstre traité ou la non-généralisation. Comme on a vu, il y a moins de 20%, ça dépend des années, c'est pourquoi on, on, on voit que ça monte et, et, et ça descend. Et comparé à, à, à le coût de traitement d un, d un, à l'hectare d'une maladie foliaire ou d'une mauvaise herbe, quand même, ça reste très, très abordable par rapport au, au retour sur investissement. Et ce qu'on vise à travers cette partenariat, c'est de démontrer qu'en utilisant des, des produits, on a vu la différence entre les, un bon traitement et un, un traitement moyen, le retour sur investissement est, est beaucoup plus important et l'augmentation des rendements est vraiment tributaire de, de, depuis le démarrage, à assurer un bon traitement de la semence, traitement au sol, pour avoir au moins un bon démarrage de, de la culture. Voilà, et merci encore. Merci, Simone. Uh, merci, Simone. Thank, thank you very much, Dr. We can, I think we can, there's no other questions, and it's time to, time of the end of the webinar. We come at the, to the end of this webinar. Uh, uh, I would like to mention that when you will leave the webinar, you will get a very short, actually, three questions survey to get your assessment of this webinar series. Please fill it, it will be more than helpful. Uh, I would like also to mention that the next webinar is scheduled in two weeks in the same time. My colleague Buteina is going to share with, the, with us uh, the flyer of the next webinar, please. Okay. It will be entitled A Global Platform for Leveraging Tetraploid with Diversity. It will be presented by Dr. Luigi Cattivelli, Director of the Research Center for Genomics and Bioinformatics of the Italian Council for Agricultural Research and Economics. So we'll hope to see you there in two weeks. Uh, finally, On behalf of the organizers, I would like to thank everyone who participated today and thank our guest speaker, Dr. Brigitte Slats, for his rich talk and for answering all the questions. And I would like also to, uh, to thank he, uh, uh, her colleagues, Youssef Oshir mainly, for helping a lot in uh, preparing this webinar and also the other colleagues, Abdelaziz Arfani, and also uh, your colleagues in Sangenta, Morocco. I would like also to thank my colleagues, Buteina Abidou, Atman Sabata, Reddat Tirazi, and Abdelaziz Yasri for their crucial contribution for organizing this webinar series. Thank you all, and see you in two weeks. Thank you. Bye. Thank you all. Bye. Bye. Bye.